The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, because He will take what is Mine and declare to you. All that the Father has is Mine. For this reason I said that He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let's be seated. I said it's good to see you all here on this Father's Day weekend, Holy Trinity Sunday. Also a beautiful day in Pittsburgh, and uh, it certainly is nice to have. But I'm going to say grace and peace to you from God our Father, His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, it was scarcely, you know, half past nine in the evening when this rather fierce-looking father, he entered the living room where his daughter and boyfriend were sitting. Now the father had his watch in his hand, and he said, young man, young man, do you know what time it is? Y- y- yes, sir, stammered the, the, the frightened boyfriend as he jumped to his feet running to the front door. I was just about to leave, as, as the boyfriend said, as the door slammed shut behind him. Now the father, you know, and, and the bo- after the boyfriend made this, this rapid exit, the father turned to his daughter and he said in astonishment, he says, what in the world is the matter with that guy? My watch stopped working. I just wanted to know the time. All right, happy Father's Day to all of our dads. <laughs> Every June, sons and daughters across this country honor their fathers with cards and gifts and, and a little encouragement to, to sort of kick back for the day. And why not honor our fathers? And when you think about it, fathers have, a, have multifaceted personalities. You know, they wear a lot of hats. At times, they are our friends, our playmates, our coaches, and teachers. While at other times, they act as these strict taskmasters, correcting us whenever we do something wrong. However, the undeniable fact is that they love us immensely and unconditionally. You know, sadly, even after knowing this truth, rarely do we express our adoration towards our dads freely, which is why it is good that a special day be dedicated to all the fathers and those who act in fatherly ways. Now, some of you here, I've been here almost 17 years, you have met my dad on occasion over these years, right? And if you know my dad, he's just a simple man of modest means. He's a mountain man. He's a self-confessed hillbilly who enjoys the outdoors and just being around people. You usually find him every, every day, Monday through Sunday, he will be at McDonald's drinking his coffee with his buddies. Now over the years, especially on the, in those rearing days, my dad taught us a lot about life. He talked us, taught us about truth and honesty and courage, loyalty, respect, work ethic, and love. In dad's own way, he was a leader of the family, especially when my mother let him be. <laughs> And where was dad leading us? Well, dad led us to places that we as his kids thought that we would never go. And to places, and to to be the people who we are today. But what stands out the most to me about my dad is that there was rarely a Sunday, rarely a Sunday that he missed church. You see, no matter what shift dad was working at the glass factory that he spent 42 years of his life, he found time to be with God in worship. Now why? Why? Well, because my mother drug him there, <laughs> but, but because he is, his faith was important to him. On this Trinity Day festival, a day in which the church celebrates God as three in one, as we come together, I want to talk about our faith. You see, define faith means this. It means belief. It means trust or reliance. And so when you think about that, it's easy then to say that many of us have faith in a lot of things. My friends, we believe that the rain will eventually stop here in PA. I can't build a boat so it darn well better. We trust that, that the latest diet fad will deliver. In my family, we call it the Brenda Fat Farm. That would be my wife. She's always telling me to lose weight, so I'm back on the fat farm, people. We rely on the ones we love. Explained this way, faith is easy. But when it comes to faith in God, well, that's when things get a little complicated. You see, when it comes to God, you know, we probably have more questions than we do answers. You know, what does it mean, God in three persons? When Jesus descended to the dead, you know, where did he go? And where exactly, you know, where where exactly is heaven? Questions. 
Consider our reading from John. Jesus is instructing his followers. The hours were passing rapidly. Time was running out. In a short while, Jesus will be taken away and killed. This in John's gospel is called his final discourse, his final teaching with his friends. He had so much to say in this little bit of time that he had left, and yet Jesus was aware that his disciples were just not ready to take it all in. You see, they were still stumbling over the meaning of parables. They were in awe of all the miracles that he performed and that they witnessed. And they were constantly bickering, trying to get ahead of the other. Jesus just wanted to speak in a clear and a very direct manner. But the more that Jesus spoke, the more fear and anxiety filled all their minds. They had questions. So Jesus answers, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. In short, the disciples weren't ready to hear, listen, and receive that, that, that what Jesus had to say, especially about the future, which is true for us too. I was reading this week in my dorm. I was back in my dorm, right, working on my sermon. It was early, people. I, got up, I was up, Bob, right? I made breakfast every day. Again, I'm on the fat farm, but I made breakfast every day. Studies have found that 90% in my, in my research this week, studies have found that 90% of people have no desire to know what their future holds. You see, given the choice, most people don't want to know, even if the events could make them happy. Research says that, that people would rather avoid the grief that knowing the future could cause. Most people wish to avoid regretting their decision to know and want to preserve the enjoyment of surprise in their lives. In Greek mythology, one researcher shared, Cassandra, daughter of the king of Troy, had the power to foresee the future. But she was also cursed with no one believing her. In our study, the researcher concluded, we found that people would rather decline the powers that made Cassandra famous in an effort to forego the suffering that knowing the future may cause. Some people may want the gift of knowing the future, but most would rather not know, myself included. The disciples were anxious about what lied ahead for them. And so Jesus said in their anxiousness, he looks at them and he says, you know what, I still have those many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Jesus knew that his disciples weren't ready for what he had to share. But soon they would. And the spirit of truth will arrive and, and declare to you the things that are to come. Jesus was promising them that there would be somebody, some dead, to help them in their confusion, to answer all their questions. The spirit of truth would come, but, but in the meantime, in the meantime, they needed to trust, believe, and have faith in God. You know, likewise, we too, we too have our questions, don't we? We all have them. In, in, in our train of study, we call it theodicy, the great why question. You know, why do good people suffer? You know, why, why is life sometimes so unfair? And what is the purpose of aging? And why does God not make faith a little easier? There is a lot that none of us can understand. We're just not built that way. But we do know everything about God that we need to know. Paul said this in our second lesson that Tim read for us. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained the forgiveness and access to His grace. In other words, we know that God loves us and sent His Son to die for us. And we should know this because God's love, Paul said, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, through the gift of all of our baptisms. And that is what we really need to know. That God's grace is ours. Now, do we still have questions? Absolutely. Will we ever have those answers? Well, I believe we will. Because one day everything will be revealed just like it was to those disciples. Paul says in another letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then one day, one day we will see face to face. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I look forward to that day. 
You see, I look forward to having some questions answered and the pieces of the puzzle in my life put into place. I read a story again this week that was shared that that in order to save some money, a college drama class purchased only a few scripts of a certain play and he cut them up into separate pieces and parts. The director gave each player his individual part and order and then started to rehearse the play. But nothing went right. After an hour of miscues and mangled sequences, the cast, well, you know, they just found, they they had enough. They gave up. Well, at that point, the director sat the actors all on the stage. He sat them all down, and he gathered them in, and he said this. He said, look, look, I'm going to read the entire play to you. So don't any of you, don't any of you say a word. He read the entire script aloud. And when he was finished, One of the actors said, so that's what it's all about. And and when they understood the entire story, they were able to fit their parts together and have a successful rehearsal. A famous theologian, I believe it was C.S. Lewis, he once said that the most frequently spoken word in heaven would be this, oh, as in, oh, now I understand, or, or oh, now I see what God's plan was, or, or oh, now I see the reason for that trial that I went through. My friends, we do not have that luxury in this world. So we must walk by faith and not by our knowledge. But one day, one day it will all be revealed to us. As Jesus said, He said, I still have many things to say to you, but you, you cannot bear them now. And that is what Jesus said to His disciples, and that is what Jesus is saying to all of us. Now, of course, when it comes to God, we have as many questions as we do the answers. What does it mean, God in three persons? When Jesus ascended, where did He go? Where is heaven? You know, what what happens when we die, and, and why do good people suffer? The reality is, we don't have all the answers to life's most difficult questions. And, well, we know very little about God. But the truth is that our greatest need is not to know more, but to be able to believe, trust, and rely more on God. And that is what we learn on this Trinity Sunday. That through our faith, even if we don't have all of the answers, That we are loved by God, that we are saved by God's grace and His Son, and that God will be with us always. So to you all out there today, my fathers, have a happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day for those that act in fatherly ways. But remember this as you walk this path. We don't have all the answers, and that's okay, because God is with us. And thanks be to God for that. In Jesus' name, amen.